Welcome back everybody. It is week three of our van build and time is already flying. It's crazy. This week we're going to be starting the cabinetry. So we're going to be building the bench seat, start the closet and the kitchen cabinets, all that fun stuff. Usually cabinetry is about a two week process. Um, there's a lot of wait time in between letting things dry while they're clamped, but we're going to get started and show you guys how we do it. But first, we got to cue the intro. Last week, we framed out the shower and built the bed frame. And we did take a couple of days off of filming since then uh, and worked a little bit on some things. No major changes yet, but I will go ahead and fill you on on what we did uh, the last couple of days when we didn't film. Since the last video, we have put up this portion of the shower. And so this is actually going to be paneled and have a nice decorative wallpaper on it. And then, did I say that word wallpaper? <laughs> and then this <laughs> is gonna be the doorway. And we're gonna have a self-cleaning door uh, that slides and retracts back to this side on here. One of the things we were considering when we were making this door is that it needed to be wide enough for his composting toilet to easily make it out the door so that if he wants to remove it while he's showering, he can have the full use of the shower. As you guys can see, we added this big partition wall. Uh, this is gonna be the divider between the living area and the garage space. Uh, we scribed this. Uh, in the other day to go around the wheel wells and then these walls are actually also going like curving up So we had to cut an angle here to make it uh, Sit flush with this wall uh, It's not fully in right now because it's got to be we're gonna be moving it in and out a bunch So and we're gonna be adding holes and cutting it up a little bit more also You can see our other paneling went up or the rest of this wall paneling went up we just used a three mil ply and this is what our uh, ship lap is actually gonna sit on and glue to. Right now we are actually working on building the pocket door that's going to go into the partition wall. So we've already made all the cuts and we're getting ready to assemble it, but before we do that, I'm gonna show you uh, how we have put this together. What we're building is called a shaker style door. And what that means is that there's gonna be an outer frame, which is these two pieces called the rails, and then a piece, we have this one, piece on either, side like this called the styles and you'll notice that we have routed dados in all of these uh, we did it with a router but you could do this with a dado blade on a table saw and we've off centered this because our quarter inch panel is going to fit in here like this and on the other side of it it's kind of hard to explain right now. <laughs> on the other side of it, when it's all put together, um, we're gonna have a, a mirror glued on the inside. So that's why this side has more overlap than this side will, if that makes any sense at all. One of the reasons we're building a shaker style door is because the frame will be glued together. So we've actually used a biscuit joiner and these are gonna connect together on all four sides. But the panel actually isn't glued in, it just sits in these grooves. And what that allows for is expansion and contraction uh, with different weather. So this will not be warping and twisting like say a single piece of plywood would. So we're gonna get this piece all put together and glued together and we will show you guys once it's all done so that hopefully it makes a little bit more sense what I was just explaining. I honestly can't remember if I already told you guys, but we're using poplar for this. One of the reasons is because it is notoriously one of the straightest pieces of hardwood you can get. Um, it's really easy to work with and it doesn't warp very easily. And then this panel is just quarter inch plywood. So I'm going to try to re-explain what I was trying to say earlier now that we have it clamped together. So this side sits in deeper so that we have room to glue a mirror on top of here versus if you look on the bottom side, I don't know how well you can tell, but this is only set in an eighth of an inch. So that way we have more room up here to set a mirror in. And this is the side that you'll be seeing from the cab, or sorry, not from the cab, from the other side of the cab, from the living area. And the bottom side is what you'll be seeing from the cab. We initially were going to use the mirror itself as the shaker door panel. Um, and then we realized that that would actually be a terrible idea because if it ever broke, that mirror ever shattered, it would be practically impossible to replace it because you'd have to take this entire door apart um, and basically destroy it. So instead, we're going to have a slightly smaller mirror that 
sets in here instead of going into the dados here. That way, if it ever did shatter, um, it, this will just be glued on top. So theoretically, you could just pull the rest of it off and replace it with another mirror. While we're waiting for the pocket door to dry, I'm gonna explain to you how our slider pocket door is gonna work. Uh, we bought this piece of channel from Home Depot. It's actually a kind of like a closet slider made for like two closet doors to slide past each other. Um, so we actually cut this in half, put, him up, put it up here, and then once we've got our pocket door uh, sanded and painted, we're actually gonna hook these guys up to the back of the door. And that's actually gonna hook on to this in the groove. You wanna just show them up here? Yeah, I'll show them up here. So we're gonna, that's gonna hook up into here like that. So it's gonna allow it to slide back and forth. The door is gonna be wider than the opening. So when it's fully closed, it'll be flush with this wall right here. But when wait, it's- Wait, 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 you gotta explain that wall right there. <laughs> as you can see down here, um, the door is actually going to be a little bit wider than, uh, the than opening this. of, yeah, the opening of this. <laughs> so when it's closed, it's going to be in between this gap. So it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, and then when it's fully opened, uh, it'll be flush with this tree. This is not the actual size of the door. <laughs> not the actual size. We use this for figuring it out. <laughs> Up here is going to be all trim, so you're, you're not going to see any gaps on the, the, the floor or ceiling, so no light's going to get through. You're not going to be able to push the door in and out. One of the major pros to having a partition wall is A, privacy, so you're never worrying about your curtain being 100% closed so that you don't have like the tiniest bit of light going through it, and B, insulation. So Obviously, in the cab, there are a lot of windows. You have your big windshield and your two side windows, and those let in a lot of hot or cold, depending on where you are, and affect the temperature of the living area. But if you have a partition wall, then that's actually adding a pretty significant layer of insulation to keep the living space a certain temperature. Now, of course, one of the downsides is that if you wanted to do like a, a swivel chair and open that up as extra seating, that's not an option with a partition wall. So everything in a van is give and take, but the idea for a partition wall is really great, especially if you're gonna be doing a lot of city camping where the stealth factor is important to you, or if you're going to be in extreme climates where the climate control factor is important to you. Since we are waiting for our door to dry, we're gonna keep moving on. And the next thing on the list is to build the bench for the single person seating area. So we're gonna build that out of three quarter inch plywood and we've already taken all the measurements so that we know exactly what cuts we need to make. So we're gonna go ahead and make those cuts on the table saw and we'll show you guys how we put it together. build there bud <laughs> super solid this is just for <laughs> mocking up purposes but that's the bench that's a bench that's, that's gonna it. be it's gonna be a big drawer that's it lots of storage yeah go for it <laughs> this doesn't like collapse on me <laughs> is it comfy it's the perfect height yeah the benches in our van were like a hair too tall where it's like not super comfortable but like have your feet on the floor this yeah, is kinda hang. perfect. Yeah. We nailed it this time. Just in case anybody is curious why we're not doing a top open on that bench is because we're actually gonna do a pull out drawer under it. So this is one of the things that we really wish that we did on ours because having to take your cushion off every time to access um, under the bench is really not very convenient. So we're doing a drawer instead so that you don't have to move anything around and it'll be easy to just pull out and put back in. It'll be a nice deep drawer to utilize that space instead. We're actually gonna assemble all of these benches and cabinets outside of the van so that we actually know that 100% everything is perfectly square. If you try to square things to the van itself, Sorry. I can assure you that your van is not square. Every single van has like curved edges and sometimes they're just imperfect. So your best bet is to make sure everything is square first and then go ahead and put it in the van. So we'll give you guys the full rundown of how we assemble cabinets. 
So we're using, again, three quarter inch plywood. Highly recommend that you do not use plywood from Home Depot. A lot of them are very poor quality. So if you can, go to your local uh, like woodworking kind of shop somewhere where you can find better quality plywood. We love Home Depot, just not their plywood. Just not their wood, no. So basically what you're gonna do for cabinets is you're gonna have your two, I feel like you can't see me over here. So you're gonna have your two um, walls of the cabinet, essentially, your two side pieces. And obviously you're going to cut that to whatever size you want the cabinet to be. Um, this bench is gonna be built a little bit differently than we would build kitchen cabinets because kitchen cabinets are gonna have a toe kick um, they're designed just a little bit differently, uh, but for this, you're going to have your two sides, and then in the back, it, so it's not, it's not necessary to do um, three full sheets of plywood, so you do your two on the side, and then you put a cross brace in the back, and then a cross brace on the front, but you're going to want the front one to be this way, and your back cross brace to be this way. We'll show you. <laughs> camera died on us yesterday and unfortunately we don't have a backup battery right now so I'm gonna pick you guys up today where we left off yesterday and show you our finished bench I say finished but it's actually not quite finished because we will of course be putting a face frame on here and securing it down it's just dry fitted in here right now but what I was talking about yesterday was these cross braces one here on the front laying this way because you want it to basically be the same as your side pieces like this and then you have a piece like this, so you lay this one down that way. But your back cross brace, you want to lay down the other way because it will provide more support. Another thing that we have tackled is the beginnings of our closet. So we got these two pieces of plywood cut out and scribed to the back wall. As you guys know, the curvature of the back wall of the van is... <laughs> It's not straight, duh, curvature. The walls of your van are not straight, so it is important to take the time to figure out exactly how that curvature goes. I would highly recommend making a template before you actually make final cuts on your wood. You can use just scrap wood, you can use a piece of cardboard, whatever you have laying around, but it's always good to double check that you have the right curvature before you make that cut on your piece of wood. I think that's one of the things that makes building in a van a little bit more complicated than like just standard what do you want to call it carpentry yeah. woodworking like working in a home um you have to work with the actual like shape of the van so it's just a little bit more time consuming but it's absolutely worth it because the end product just looks so much cleaner so before we actually finish the bench and the closet we need to shift gears and finish up the well start <laughs> the kitchen cabinets we need to do that because we have to figure out exactly where that's gonna sit so that we can make final cuts on this wall so that we can put this wall in so that we can put the bench in so that we can finalize the width of the closet. So we're gonna be building our kitchen cabinet similar to how we were built our bench seat. Uh, we're gonna have two side pieces with square notches cut out for the toe kick. Uh, from there, we're gonna cut a dado along the bottom of it. That's also gonna act as the bottom of the. Y'all know what a dado is? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> it's I'll a groove. <laughs> a groove. <laughs> Whatever. Just explain it. Okay. A do uh, a do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just feel like not everybody knows what a dado is. They'll see it. Tell them about it. it. You'll see it. So a dado is a groove cut out with a router or a table saw. So you slide a piece of wood between the other two pieces of wood. Ah! <laughs> Before I was rudely interrupted, <laughs> we're gonna cut out a dado for the floor to slide in, also acting as the top of the toe kick. Um, and then we're gonna brace the back and the top of the cabinet to keep it square. And we can build <laughs> our face frames from there. That was a death look, what? A death look. <laughs> you ruined and it. And that's how we're doing it. Ruined it. Ah. This camera angle makes me feel so short. <laughs> hey. Yep. So what I was trying to explain earlier is when we cut in this dado, we're actually gonna cut maybe a quarter inch deep, uh, basically slot for another piece of three quarter slide in here. So this is basically gonna be 
I don't know. Here's a better example. <laughs> Basically cutting a slit along here so that a the floor of the actual cabinet can slide in to place so it's perfectly level. And then we're either gonna shoot some nails or screw in on this side so it is sturdy. So we, mostly Kenzie, are figuring out this cabinet situation. <laughs> you like my piece of paper? Yeah. We show them. Ugh. So we're taking all the measurements from our... From our brains. <laughs> from our refrigerator, <laughs> from our sink, from... And just measuring out how, where each divider of the actual cabinet are going. This is the part that I think most people kind of leave out or like that you don't see when people are building their vans is like the hours of <laughs> sitting and going through every single measurement to make sure it's all right. But if you don't do this, you're going to regret it because you're going to end up with something off, you know? How long have we been sitting here trying to figure this out? I think it's been an hour of probably an hour. <laughs> this. I know this looks like chaos, but it's pretty organized to us. <laughs> now we know each and every piece of wood that we need to cut out for tomorrow. It should fit together like a puzzle, but it is late and we're gonna call it a day. So you're gonna have to see us assemble the cabinet next video. I was hoping that we would get some kitchen cabinets together today, but we actually had some errands to run. So we got a late start today and we just have to take the time to do the figuring out part of it. That is not as much fun before we actually start making cuts and putting it together. Well, I hope you guys found something useful out of this video. If you liked it, hit the like button. It really helps us out. And keep those questions coming in the comments. Tune in next week if you guys wanna see us assemble those cabinets and actually start putting things into the van, making them pretty, putting face frames on things, and it'll actually start to come together and then we can work on the technical stuff like the plumbing, electrical, and all that good stuff. We are super excited to see things starting to come together and we'll see you next video.